A major global shift is happening quietly beneath the oceans, and it's reshaping how experts think about undersea power. Recent assessments now show China operating more nuclear-powered submarines than Russia, placing it second worldwide by fleet size. This video explains how China reached this point, why analysts see it as a turning point rather than a routine update, and what this development reveals about where undersea capabilities are heading next. The most important takeaway from recent submarine assessments is not simply that China has overtaken Russia in nuclear-powered submarine numbers, but how methodically this change unfolded. According to current estimates, the People's Liberation Army Navy now operates around 32 nuclear-powered submarines. By comparison, the Russian Navy is estimated to field between 25 and 28. This shift did not happen suddenly, nor was it driven by a single breakthrough platform. China followed a steady expansion strategy that emphasized continuity. Older submarines remained active while newer designs entered service in parallel. Instead of waiting for an entirely new generation to be ready before increasing fleet size, China chose to build advanced variants of existing designs at scale. This overlapping approach ensured that fleet numbers increased without interruptions in availability. The primary contributor to this growth has been the Type 093B nuclear-powered submarine. Estimates suggest that roughly 16 Type 093B hulls have begun construction or entered service. That figure alone accounts for much of the numerical change observed in recent assessments. What makes this particularly notable is the complexity involved. Nuclear-powered submarines require advanced reactors, precision engineering, specialized materials, and highly trained crews. Scaling production to this level signals that these challenges have become routine rather than exceptional. Fleet size matters because submarines are not always operational. Maintenance cycles, crew rotations, and long deployments reduce the number of vessels that can be active at any given time. A larger fleet allows for more flexibility, more consistent coverage, and less strain on individual platforms. China's growing numbers, therefore, translate into sustained presence rather than symbolic expansion. Equally important is what this says about industrial capacity. Shipyards capable of producing multiple nuclear-powered submarines simultaneously require long-term investment and stable supply chains. Once those systems mature, production tends to accelerate. Analysts increasingly describe China's submarine growth as an industrial achievement as much as a technological one. This foundation explains why attention is now shifting from raw numbers to the platforms that made this expansion possible. The Type 093B submarine stands out not because it represents a dramatic redesign, but because of the role it plays in China's broader development strategy. It is the most advanced and final evolution of the Type 093 family, incorporating improvements refined over years of operational experience. More importantly, it acts as a bridge between today's fleet and the next generation of submarines currently under development. Although detailed specifications remain limited, analysts widely expect the Type 093B to feature enhanced acoustic performance, upgraded sensors, and expanded mission flexibility compared to earlier variants. Reports suggest it is designed to integrate advanced missile systems, including hypersonic-capable platforms. While those systems attract attention, the larger story is how they are being introduced. Instead of waiting for the next generation Type 095 submarine to enter service, China deployed the Type 093B as an advanced interim solution. This approach allows new technologies to be introduced gradually and tested under real operational conditions. Any issues can be identified early, improvements can be incorporated, and crews gain experience long before the next generation arrives. This strategy significantly reduces risk. When the Type 095 eventually enters service, many of its core technologies will already have been validated through the Type 093B. Training pipelines, maintenance procedures, and operational concepts will already exist. The scale of Type 093B production also matters, producing a large number of similar platforms, which improves reliability and reduces long-term costs. It also accelerates learning across shipyards and crews. Each submarine benefits from lessons learned on the previous one, creating a feedback loop that steadily improves quality. Rather than being a temporary placeholder, the Type 093B strengthens current capabilities while laying groundwork for the future. It reflects a philosophy focused on continuity and scale rather than isolated leaps. 
This is why analysts view it as a cornerstone of China's submarine expansion. Understanding this role helps explain why other navies are paying close attention, not just to the submarine itself, but to the system that produced it. China's expanding submarine fleet has drawn attention not because other navies lack capable platforms, but because their production environments look very different. The United States Navy, for example, operates some of the world's most advanced nuclear-powered submarines. However, analysts increasingly highlight shipyard capacity as a structural limitation. Current estimates suggest U.S. shipyards produce just over one nuclear-powered attack submarine per year, while long-term planning calls for more than two annually. This difference has long-term consequences. Submarines require replacement as they age, and delays compound over time. Even small production shortfalls can lead to fleet sizes remaining below targets for decades. Russia faces another set of challenges. While it retains advanced submarine technology, much of its fleet consists of older platforms that require replacement rather than expansion. Modernization efforts often focus on sustaining existing capabilities, leaving limited room for rapid numerical growth. China's position is different. The same throughput limitations do not constrain its shipyards, and life extension programs do not dominate its fleet expansion. New submarines are entering service at a pace that allows total numbers and average capability to rise together. That combination is difficult to achieve and even harder to reverse once established. Another factor drawing attention is the steady improvement in stealth and detection avoidance. Analysts generally agree that each new Chinese submarine generation shows measurable progress. While debates continue over exact comparisons, the trend is clear. When incremental improvements are paired with increasing fleet size, their impact multiplies. The broader implication is that undersea competition is shifting. It is becoming less about comparing individual platforms and more about industrial momentum. The ability to design, build, and deploy advanced submarines consistently is emerging as a decisive factor. China's recent expansion highlights the power of that momentum, shaping long-term planning well beyond current capabilities. Taken together, China's submarine expansion tells a much larger story than a change in rankings. It shows how undersea capability is increasingly shaped by production speed, integration strategy, and long-term planning. The Type 093B is not an endpoint, but a foundation for future platforms like the Type 095 and Type 096 expected in the 2030s. The key lesson is that sustained industrial capacity may matter as much as individual technological breakthroughs. In the years ahead, the ability to build, deploy, and evolve advanced systems at scale will likely define leadership beneath the oceans. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.